Hi everyone, welcome to Coffee and Conversations today. Sorry if you just tuned in a few seconds ago, I had a little bit of an internet glitch. Um, but for those of you who do not know me, I'm Chelsea. I'm the social and digital manager at Scene Magazine. I'm super excited to bring on our guest today, Barb Baker, um, aka the Siren of Stout. Barb is a beer expert, a home brewer, and she's also the vice president of Fermenta, which is a Michigan non-based, um, sorry, a Michigan-based nonprofit that supports and encourages women in the food and beverage industry. So we'll obviously be talking a lot about beer today, but some other fun things. So I'm going to welcome Barb in to the live. Hi, Barb. Hey, how good are to see you? you? Good. good. To see you love your hair. It's very fall, isn't it? It's so cute. Fall I is my it. favorite time of year. I like to call it not fall season, but pumpkin season. Yeah. Because you guys know I, I'm obsessed with pumpkin. So, yeah, we no, got the pumpkin I, beer I we're it. drinking. We got the yes. hair. We're ready to go. Perfect. So, what are you drinking? I am drinking a Odd Side Ales Bean Flicker Pumpkin yep. Spice. And I'm drinking it out of one of my mugs that <laughs> <laughs> keeps it cold. So this is delicious. Thank you, Sasha, for giving this to me because I need like 400 more of these. <laughs> that sounds so good. I've had the normal bean flicker before, but I have not had the pumpkin spice version. So I think I'm going to have to get on that. that sounds... they, do, they do everything right at Odd Side Ales. Yeah. Everything they do, their dark beers, their light beers, they do everything right over there. So, and this is no exception. Yeah, definitely. So I, I, I really want to get into like all the beer talk. I, I'm an avid beer drinker myself. Um, I've always loved beer. I like trying different beers. Um, I have like a wide variety of tastes. I knew so I liked it for some reason. <laughs> so I definitely have a lot of questions for you. Um, but before we get into all that, can you just briefly introduce yourself and kind of tell our followers what you do for a living and all that fun stuff? Your introduction was really great, but I will, I will say. Um, so hey, hey, everybody out there. My name is Barb Baker. I'm the Siren of Stout. And by Siren of Stout, that means I am, what I'm doing is I'm bringing women, people of color, marginalized people into the beer industry. I'm, I'm going out just pulling people in because I want you guys to know that you are included, you're accepted, you are welcome. Uh, we all, sh if you love beer, if you love the industry, you should be in it. So that's what I do as a Siren of Stout. Uh, like Chelsea said, I am the vice president of Fermenta, which is a women's craft organization. Um, I am also um, a Midwest ambassador for Brooklyn Brewery. And for about 20 some years, I have been a TV personality, a voiceover actor, and a commercial actor as well. So I try to, I'm a Gemini, so I try to do everything that there is to do. <laughs> I am also a Gemini, so I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like you even better. Yeah, definitely. We're on the same playing field for sure. But yeah, that's great. I mean, you got your your busy woman. You got a lot going on. Um, but can you just briefly share, like, how did you get interested in beer, and like, what was that like for you? Like, where did that love for beer come from or start? Well, it started. It initially started my my sophomore year in college, where somebody at a fraternity party handed me a Heineken, and I was like. This is delicious. But it was delicious for a couple of reasons. Because, well, it was good. It was free. There were boys there. And just the, the community of beer. This is what I love about beer. This is what's kept me in it, is the social aspect, the community, the culture of it. I've, I've, from that, that first beer, I have found it to be very welcoming. So that's what I really love. Now, I can't say that my passion stayed directly from that because I, um, I was a collegiate athlete, so I was a hurdler, so I wasn't a huge drinker. Um, I ran in college, I ran a little after college, I also did road races, I was a fitness competitor for a number of years. Wow. So it's really hard to be 8% body fat and drink beer. Yeah. <laughs> so I really wasn't a big drinker at all. I drank some wine, a little bit of maybe some vodka drinks, but I wasn't a big drinker. And then after I closed the chapter on on my competitive, um, being a competitive athlete, then I started really getting into it. You know, we have so many great breweries mm -hmm. in Detroit and the food is great too. That's what's so spectacular is you go to a brewery, 
you don't just have to go there to drink, you can go there to eat. Yeah. So we go there and just started hopping from place to place to place. And that's what really got me into it is, is Michigan is, is a number one for getting, getting a real passion for beer. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's like you mentioned, there's so many great craft breweries all over the state. Um, so it's kind of piggybacking off that, what are some of your favorites? I'm curious to know. My favorite, when I, cause I'm thinking about food and beer. Yeah. <laughs> um, Holmes Brewing okay. is in Ann Arbor. The food, psh, the beer, psh, um, like when we have time, like, like the pandemic's kind of going on, but what we yeah. have to do, because it's kind of a hike to get over there, is we will get up early, drive to Ann Arbor, sit in the parking lot, wait till it's open so we can be the first ones in there, <laughs> and have a couple beers before we have to make the hike home. So yeah, Holmes is, is really great. And also Coonan's in Warren. Coonan's oh, does okay. a lot, in which case, uh, when I do my beer poking, I'm going to have one yeah. of those beers. <laughs> they do a lot of magic over there. They have a creme brulee java stout. They have a blueberry uh, dippa, which it's just, it's magic over there. All of those sound so good. They're um, really, really good. Them, so, yeah, I, I've heard of homes, but okay, so everyone go check out those two places. Barb recommends. So we'll have to hit up those places sometime soon. Um, so circling back um, about your involvement in Fermenta, would love to know more about that. Um, if you can explain more about the organization and what you guys do and just how you're kind of trying to encourage and support women who have similar passions. Yeah, so Fermenta is, I'm the vice president of Fermenta, which is a craft beer, or I'm sorry, a craft collective, a women's craft collective. So what that means is, whether you're a woman in beer, in liquor, in kombucha, in, um, in any sort of fermentation industry, we want to support you. We want to help you. We want to be a guiding light for you. If there's something that you need out there, you need a resource, you can come to us. You know, we will help you with that. So we give away a lot of scholarships to trade, trade events, um, to, beer, um, to beer festivals, for books, for uh, education. So that's, we're just trying to empower women to be their best selves in the fermentation industry. That's awesome. Um, that's super probably needed in the industry. I mean, obviously, as you know, it's a very white male dominated industry. Um, and as a woman and a woman of color, it's very, you're very hard to come by. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Like, what has that, have you experienced any setbacks from that? Or what, what's your experience like being a woman of color in the beer industry? I personally, and I'm careful when I say this, because I personally haven't had any setbacks. That doesn't mean a good majority of women and women of color and men, people of color, ha you know, haven't, like right. they have. So that's why when I talk about being a community, from my first beer up until now, I have been very welcomed. I've been very, people have been excited about me being places. <laughs> yeah. Um, I learned from my mother a long time ago. Um, she told me this all growing up. She goes, wherever you go, you belong. It doesn't matter wherever you go, you belong. So I honestly, I could probably care less if people think I belong there or not, because my mother told me <laughs> wherever I go, I belong. And you know what? She's never been wrong in the 76 years she's been here. So, um, but as far as, as navigating in, in that sort of space, what I like to do is be very present represent, go to beer festivals, go to beer things, and have people see, be the representation, be the woman in the room, be the black yeah. woman in the room. And that way, it's not like, why is she here? I yeah. think when more of us get into it, it's just going to be pretty normal. Yeah. And I have no problem begging people, <laughs> begging <laughs> women. I will jump in somebody's DMs in a minute and go, hey, lady, I heard you say that, you know, you need some books or you don't feel very supported. Fermenta will really support <laughs> Come on over to Fermenta. Well, so I probably have quite a few people who are like, why is Bart Baker bothering me? <laughs> no. I help you. Yeah, I don't think you're bothering them. I think that's such like you have like such great spirits and like such a good attitude about it and an outlook on it. And just like everything that you're doing, like you're so like you're just like an empowerful voice for women in the beer industry who want to like be doing similar things to you, but maybe are like, ah, I don't know, like or they don't know how to get there. So I think that's great. And um, you're just like a positive light in 
the whole Thank overall you. industry. So yeah. yeah. I'm really hoping to be, I'm hoping to kind of, I will say right before this pandemic started, I was putting together beer pairings and beer tastings, mm -hmm. angled to women and women of color, but anybody could show up, but it was more about pairing cultural foods, you know, foods that oh, are cool. part of our culture with beer. Yeah. Um, you know, like doing big mac and cheese and pairing it with a brown ale or something like that. So as soon as you come in, you know you like the food. Yeah. Maybe you try the beer and maybe you'll like them both. But the pandemic has yeah. blown, has yeah. blown everything up. So. Yeah, I, th I think everyone feels, feels that pain um, of the pandemic. But hopefully we're moving towards better times. Uh <laughs> oh, and something reminded me. I saw your yeah. last Coffee and Conversations with Bruce Schwartz. Yeah. That was so fabulous. He is so spectacular. I'm throwing down the gauntlet to you, Detroit Bruce, that I want to come to Detroit and we do a beer tour. <laughs> oh my God, that would be so fun. Bruce, if you're watching, listen, because this is what you need to do. You need to get with Barb and do this. That would be so good. Oh my God. <laughs> I should definitely ping him after this and let him know that um, we had this chat and you're interested in that. So I'll uh, see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much too um, for watching that. It was it was a really good interview. That was really um, good. Yeah. So I really want to know. I'm so curious, and I'm sure other people are as well. What are your all time favorite beers? <laughs> My all time favorite beers at 12:42. <laughs> hey, it's Friday. Because uh, so. once again, we already yeah. said I'm a Gemini, so. Yeah. Something could be my ultimate favorite, and I'll never change it until 15 minutes. <laughs> so my ultimate favorites now are Goose Island Bourbon, uh, Bourbon County Vanilla, Ooh. Fault by Homes Brewing in Ann Arbor. Basically, I can say anything by Homes Brewing, but their fault is, and um, Wrench by Industrial Arts Brewing, and I believe that's in New York. But um, yeah, today at now 12.43. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> those are my all time favorites. I'm sure like, obviously, you're, you're, you're a beer expert, like you do this for a living, like you just, I don't know, it's like being a chef of beer, like almost, you know what I mean? Like, it, when you're a chef, it's like, how can you pick a certain dish that you just love to eat all the time? Um, yeah, like, how can you pick your favorite husband? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, that's hilarious. Oh, um, okay. Do you normally like gravitate towards like a certain style or again, you're just kind of like across the board? Well, I am the Siren of Stout. Yeah. So that means that I like Belgian ales. Okay. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Siren of Stout, so I love, I love stout beers, all yeah. stouts, imperial, uh, milk, foreign stouts. I'm a big stout fan. Lately, I have really been getting into IPAs. This summer, my mainstay was Bell's um, Lighthearted. Bell's Two Heart, Two Hearted, Lighthearted. They're light IPA. Okay. Light in calories, light in flavor. Well, not light in flavor because it was a bomb of flavor, but light in calories and it was delicious. So I have really been the siren of IPA this this okay. summer. Yeah. Um, changing it. And then recently, <laughs> what, what do you say? I'm sorry. I said you're you're going from one end to the other, but like that's totally. totally fine. Yeah. Totally. But I still have a cellar full of stouts and I know when the winter comes, I will be cracking them open. I'll be back to back to normal. But um yeah, as far as this season, I I my favorite sort of like pumpkin or, or yeah. seasonal beers, fall beers, um, and I just was introduced to this a couple weeks ago was um shorts, pure Michigan Autumn IPA. Ooh. That was really, it, it tastes like a fall IPA. I mean, that's all I can say. It tastes like a fall IPA. And then, of course, all pumpkin beers. So, yeah. Street <laughs> Pumpkin by Griffin Claw, oh, Southern oh Beer Pumpkin. Um, yeah, I love all. I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. Yeah. The pumpkin spice one. I'm going to have to try that um, IPA. I'm not a huge IPA person. Um, I like like I'm 43, like I can get down with that. So good. But um, I think I would like that fall one. So I'm gonna have to try that. Well, that totally, because it doesn't, for the people, a lot of times people don't like IPAs because they don't like yeah. The bitterness. Yeah. There's no bitterness. Okay. I, every time I took another drink, I would taste, it was, it, was, it was complex too. I would taste a different flavor on the front of my tongue and then it'd be gone. I'd be like, oh, I taste grapefruit. No, I don't. <laughs> Oh, I taste mangoes. No, I don't. <laughs> and it was, it blew me away. It was really good. Okay. And no bitterness. 
Yeah. Okay. Then I have to try that because it sounds right up my alley. Um, so we also mentioned in the beginning that you do home brewing. So this mm -hmm. is interesting. How long have you been doing that? And like, what has that process been like? Well, I started, let me see, because honestly, I have not done it in a while because I have a four year old. Okay. And mama touch, mama look, mama, yeah. I can't do with that. Last thing I want to do is dump hot ward on her head. Um, <laughs> so I haven't done it in a while. But I started, let's say it would be 10 years ago. Because oh, wow. I did it for a number of years and I did a bunch of ales because that ales are my favorite. So that's what I was kind of drawn into doing. Um, if I think if I were to, it's funny because I was like, there's a lot of sanitation. There's a lot, there's a lot of steps that you can't miss. Okay. So, you know, people who are trying to get into it. Yeah. Sanitation is, is, a, is a big thing. But you know what? Sanitation, I just did some kimchi two days ago. <laughs> I'll ferment anything, by the way. <laughs> if you come over to my house, I'll ferment you. So I just did some kimchi. <laughs> and just with anything, sanitation is key. When I'm, I was doing the cabbage and the container, that's a, that's a big deal. So, um, yeah, like I said, lately I haven't been doing it. But it, it's such a fun – I love cooking, so that's why I like making beer. Yeah. Is it a long process? Like, what is the timeline for something like that, like to make a beer? You, it's like a day process. Basically, oh, okay. you take the day, you, you start, and that's another reason I don't have the yeah. day and, you know, to chop it up with this kid. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, you start early and you, you're sanitizing everything and you're boiling the wort and you're sanitizing more stuff. And there's, there's a lot of process. And I know people who've been doing it a while can just, you know, wow. it's second nature to them. But um, I will say one tip I have for new brewers out there. Yeah. Don't use your mama's spaghetti pot to brew your wort. Because you're like, that's a big enough pot. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't be cheap. Just get a big brew kettle. Because when you're boiling it and it's about to overflow, because your mama's pot's not that big. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to keep praying over it for it not to, to go over. So that's one thing, especially if you know you're going to brew more than once. Just go ahead and get a big pot. That way, when it boils up, ugh, you don't worry about it. And it'll re and the money will come back to you. you know? Yeah. So, so get, the, get the right stuff, the essential stuff. Don't try that, to get like, the right dialogue. stuff at the beginning. And yeah. it'll make it way easier. Cool. Well, all the home brewers out there, that's a hot tip. So make sure <laughs> that you got the right stuff because no mama spaghetti pots at all. So, I'm making sure that my, um, yeah, my water head over here is, is hot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cause I want to get into the beer poking. So offline, we kind of discussed this. You brought this up. You're like, Oh, I would love to do something called beer poking. I'm like, what is that? So I would love for you to demonstrate and explain what this is and what it does to your beer. <laughs> okay. Well, I am using, because I knew this is going to flip up. I'm using a fourth dimension old ale by Coonins, which is a caramely multi toffee toasted ale. It's really good. Um, and um, that's kind of what you want to use. So beer poking started about 400 years ago here in the States, longer over in, in Europe and Germany. And what you do is you take a loggerhead. I have a skewer. There was actually a guy who sent me a video of him poking his beer with a sword. Oh my gosh. Hey, I'm fine. Whatever. <laughs> if, you, if, you're, if I'm telling you to do something and you do it, I don't care how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> so a loggerhead or a skewer, which is what I'm using, and you poke it in your beer to help caramelize and bring out the flavor. So you want a beer with a lot of residual sugar so it's just like putting a marshmallow on the fire, where mm. when you eat it, it tastes completely different than just the marshmallow. Right. So it helps caramelize it. It helps just make it a smoky, nutty. It brings all the, the deep flavors up out of the beer. Wow, that is so interesting. So you recommend using like a darker type of beer or what styles? In ale, um, actually it when it originated, they made a drink called a Flip, and it was an English ale, brown sugar, and rum. And I was going to make that for you today, but okay. I didn't have any English ales in my basement. All that beer down there, not one English ale. So I did, of course okay. I had rum. But so I may make that for a video down the road. Yeah. So uh, cool. 
But what you can do is use any ale. You can use a Bach. So, but like I said, what I have is an ale because, and one that, that's pretty sugary anyway to kind of help bring out the flavor. So that's what we're going to do. Cool. And I'm using, let me get up here. This is on my stove, which I know it should be a campfire or some sort of <laughs> outdoor or whatever. If you would like to see it being done at a campfire, refer to my one minute beer buzz where I did that video last week. <laughs> so I'm hoping this is hot enough. Oh, it is smoking. Okay. <laughs> in it. Oh, wow. Two, three. Did you hear it? Just yes. so, so crazy. That is yeah. great. I have never heard of this. Ooh. I bet. I, the flavors that, of the beer in general sounded so good. How is that? <laughs> Here's what's funny. I don't know this beer to have a nutty flavor to it. Okay. You know, and I, I love Fourth Dementia. After doing that, it now tastes like walnuts and pecans. It tastes it. like um, caramel coated pecans. That sounds delicious. That's what this tastes like. Oh my God, I have to try this. My, so my boyfriend is actually from Brussels, Belgium, which obviously you know, beer mecca of the world. <laughs> um, so he's super into beer as well. And he re when he moved to the United States about four years ago, but he's been like loving the Michigan craft beer scene. Sure. And he loves things like this. So I'm going to have to definitely show him because he's going to be like, whoa, like mind blown. <laughs> yeah, and it kind of takes off the, because um, this was in the refrigerator. Yeah. So ales are better at, I believe it's 45 degrees. So you don't want them to be really, really cold anyway. Okay. So putting it in there changes the flavor and it knocks off the, the degrees where it's too cold. So cool. yeah, this is kind of perfect. That's really cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, definitely going to try that at home. I hope everyone else can give it a go as well. And to get like the full real campfire version, you can check out that video that um, Barb referenced. So, um, okay. And please send me, if you do it, please, please okay, yeah. send it to me. Yeah. Everybody out there, if you try it, I beg you to send it because I want to see it. I don't know if anyone can beat the guy with the sword. Yeah, that's but... a little intense, but. <laughs> Um, okay, so a few more questions before I let you go. Um, so in August, you and Fermenta released like a Belgian style ale with mm -hmm. uh, Eastern Market Brewing Co., correct? Yes. It was called Gretchen Wit Beer. Am I saying that correct? Yep, Gretchen Wit Beer. <laughs> it was for Women's Equality Day. I love the name, like it's so creative, so cute. I just love everything about that. Um, do you have any other exciting projects or things in the work that you can share with us? I do. Um, well, first off, just because I want to give everybody their due on the Gretchen Whit Beer project. It yeah. wasn't just Fermenta. We also had the Detroit Draft Divas who also helped um, with the brewing process. And then there were two women. It was a whole woman-led situation. So Claire, and I don't know their last names, Claire helped develop it, and Victoria did the can artwork. So it was a complete woman-led situation. Yeah. That was totally great. So as far as what I'm doing in the works, I'm still, still working with Griffin Claw. For us to do a collaboration, we want to do a charity beer. Um, and right now, they are busy. But you know what? Good. Yeah. <laughs> because if they're busy, they stay in business and they keep, keep making good beer because they're right down the street from me. So I have no problem with them being busy. But as soon yeah. as they get a tank open, we are going to do a collaboration beer. And also, I, in probably the next eight to 10 months, I will be putting out a wine. There's kind of a mock-up right there. It's called Karen's Tears. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, oh my God. It's already trademarked. So, <laughs> so I, I love wine. I mean, people think you can't love everything, but like yeah. I said, during the time when I was doing fitness stuff and, and I wasn't really passionate about beer, I was pretty passionate about wine. So um, I know that black women aren't being marketed to as aggressively as they could be in, in wine and black women love wine. You know, so I was like, I'm going to put out a wine. So that's so I'm cool. pretty excited about that too. Yeah. Well, I, we can't wait to see the end product. That sounds so exciting. And I'm excited about seeing what you come up with, with Griffin claw. I think that's going to be really cool as well. I mean, those are two really awesome projects. So I'm um, happy Thank for you. you. 
that's really fun. So um, the last question I have for you before we go is for someone who is normally not a beer drinker or like has never really dabbled in beer, but is interested in getting into it, like where do you suggest that they start or what do you suggest they start with? Okay. I think this is my preference before anyone jumps in my DMs and goes, that's a dumb preference. So I think what I really like as a starter beer for people is Shorts Soft Parade Shandy. Why am I saying that? Because a lot of people have tried maybe a macro beer and they were completely turned off by everything about it. So let's start with a beer that already has elements that you like. Who doesn't like lemonade? Right. So that's in it. Who doesn't like berry flavored things or berry? <laughs> That's in it. So you're already starting from a point of, oh, I love both of those things. Okay, let me try the beer. And people who even really, really love beer love that beer. So it isn't like a beer light. It's, it's a regular beer. It just, I think, would help break people in a little easier, especially if you already, if your mind is closed. My thing is, if your mind is closed, your palate's going to be closed. Yeah. So let's open your mind, open your palate. And then we can go from there. We start with something like that. And then an imperial stout is the limit. <laughs> That's where we're going to the moon. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> That's a really wide spectrum. I know. They're, they're literally like, but, yeah, total you know, you got to start somewhere. What I tell yeah. a lot of people, if they immediately go, I hate beer, I go, okay, did you hate wine the first time you had it? Oh, I did. Yeah. So when you had your first Shiraz, did you think it was super delicious? <laughs> oh, no. When you had that first taste of Hennessy, did you think that was really good? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. But you kept drinking it. And I think a lot of things are, it's the culture around you. If mm -hmm. you drink what the people around you are drinking. So if you don't like it, after a whole bunch of times you drink it, you're going to like it. Absolutely. Yep. That's so. Cool. What if I use the wine analogy and I go, yeah, the first time I had Merlot, I didn't like it. But now I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Like, you you definitely have to, like, continue just trying things and just, like, yeah. like to expand your palate for sure. So great advice. Um, definitely something that people can do, like, very easily is try the shorts shandy. Sh shorts? Short, um, soft parade. Soft parade shandy. shandy. Okay. So for all you non-beer drinkers out there, you can try that one. Um, okay, well, thank you so much, Barb, for joining us today. This was so great. I mean, I thank learned you. a lot. Our audience learned a lot. And um, where can everyone find you? Instagram, Facebook, website, all that kind of stuff. Under everything, it's Siren, <laughs> it's Siren of Stout. So my website, sirenofstout.com, and then Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Siren of Stout. I'm trying to keep it simple. Use the KISS method. <laughs> easy. that's super easy and then we'll share your campfire video it's on your instagram you said mm -hmm. okay we'll share it to stories after this so people can see like the authentic uh beer party. being in the cold and really yeah, enjoying like, it yeah for shame. um but again thank you so much for joining me today this was really fun and thank you um, you are fabulous great to, <laughs> great to virtually yeah pandemically yeah. meet you <laughs> yeah I mean, if there's a will, there's a way, and this is the way we have to do it right now. But I'm really excited about your wine um, coming out soon. So stay tuned. For, we're all going to stay tuned for that. And happy Friday. I hope you have a great weekend. You too. Thank you so much, Chelsea. See you.